Got another question on the electrode potentials topic and as always the link to the questions in the description of the video if you wanted to try it first. So the diagram for systems 2 and 4, so I've put the Fe2 plus 3 plus half cell on the left hand side, doesn't matter which way around you do it. So in that beaker I've got one mole per decimeter cubed solutions of Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. I've got a platinum electrode and then going around the external circuit, so a wire through a voltmeter to the silver electrode, dipping into one mole per decimeter cubed solution of Ag1 plus ions and the solutions connected via a salt bridge. And obviously make sure that your salt bridge is definitely in the um, solution. The charge carriers through the wire are electrons and through the solution are ions. Quickly go back to the table to explain the cell reactions. You can see these orange arrows here indicating which direction each half cell run in. So 0.77 is more positive than 0.34. So the Fe3 plus 2 plus runs left to right and the silver silver 1 plus goes right to left. Same number of electrons so we don't need to multiply anything out. So that gives us that um, equation there and the cell potential is obviously the most positive minus least 0.43 volts. Part B, I've just copied the table again just to stop me going backwards and forwards on the PDF. So a species which oxidizes iron 2 to iron 3. So basically we want this half equation here to run backwards. So it needs to be more positive than 0 0.77 volts. So you can see it's these two here. The oxidizing agent, the electron acceptor, is obviously the thing on the left hand side. But just be careful if you go for the oxygen one, you've actually got to include the H plus ions as well. So you can either go for chlorine or oxygen and H plus ions. And for the other part of this question, we need something that's less positive than 0 0.77 volts because we want the iron half equation to run left to right. But we don't want the silver one to go left to right. So it needs to be in between these two values. And you can see it's this one here. The reducing agent, the electron donor, is the species on the right hand side now so it's the I minus ion. So finishing off with part C I've already written up the first bullet point there so the difference between a fuel cell and a conventional electrochemical cell is that fuel cells require a constant supply of fuel going to the cell whereas conventional cells have chemicals stored inside the cell. Using the information in the table to do the second bullet point, so the equation for the overall reaction that takes place in a hydrogen fuel cell. So I'm using this half equation here and this one here. And these orange arrows indicate which direction the half cell runs in. So plus 1.23 volts, obviously more positive than zero. So this half equation runs left to right. This one runs right to left. So all I'm going to do is double this one and add it to that one so the electrons are four on each side and they'll cancel out. Gives us an overall cell reaction of that there. Two ways hydrogen might be stored as a fuel for cars. Well, I've put three ways down. So it's stored under pressure as a liquid or it's absorbed into a solid material or it's adsorbed into a solid material. And for the final bullet point, I'm saying large amount of energy may be required to produce the fuel cell itself or the hydrogen fuel.